Bobby Lopez here at Quick Fix Golf, quickfixgolf.com. We're having our online classes. So you're about to waste 45 minutes of your life. But hopefully you'll have a good time doing it. We'll laugh. I'll have a few jokes. And you might even actually learn something. We'll see. But uh, tonight's topic is chipping drills to save par. No. It's the chipping drills. Here's Darren. He's down in Myrtle Beach. He just called a minute ago. That's me. That's my high school graduation picture. I don't look like that anymore. Although then my hair already turned white. And we're the PJ Pros, the Tupelo Bay. That's our headquarters right down there, just south of Myrtle Beach, close to Murals Inlet. And if you want to have a complete analysis of your swing, absolutely free. Just get out your cell phone and video your swing and upload it to our site or attach it to an email. Send it to quick service at quickfixgolf.com. Now, here's something I want to get into here. Now, we're not going to talk about where to land the ball and all, all those other kind of things in short game. But that's, that's another conversation for another day. Tonight, we're talking about the stroke itself and getting that straight because if you try measuring where you're going to land the ball, how fast it's going to roll, blah, 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 whatever, and your stroke is going to change, all that's going to change as well. So you're, you're wasting your time. So let's look at the stroke first. And you're trying to provide a stroke that's going to get the ball going the right speed. It's all about ball speed. It really is all about ball speed all the way around the golf course, but it doesn't feel like it. With the driver, you're trying to make the ball go as fast as it can possibly go. With a wedge, you're trying to get the ball to go a specific distance. That's why I don't hit my gap wedge any further than about 90 yards on purpose. I can hit it further, even as old as I am, but I don't want to because then I have to swing harder and then I'm not going to be as accurate. I'm not going to hit the ball the same distance every time, and that's what it's all about. People, when they're getting started, they're worried about hitting one to the left or to the right. I don't care about left or right. I'm, talk I'm talking about shorter past. That's what's important to me. Because you're going to be either seven feet short or ten feet long when you're chipping. Seven feet short or ten feet long. Same thing with long putts. If you want a three putt, you're going to three putt, it's because you're hitting the ball too far or you're, or you're leaving it short. It's not because you're too far to the left or too far to the right, usually. Unless there's a huge amount of break that you're not taking into consideration. Um, but usually if you're too short or too fast. Now, here's the typical what they call game improvement golf club. And you'll notice there's only a little part. I don't know how to race. I can actually mark. This, that's about the only part that's actually touching the ground right there. The rest has a rounded sole. See? Rounded sole. Now, here's the problem with this. If this sole were to come down to the ground here, that shaft would go to here, the ball will go left. If the toe goes down towards the ground and the shaft is up this way, now the ball is going to go right. So the ball is not going to go straight. That's the thing about a putter. A putter has a flat sole. So you don't usually have the, the deal with an issue of right or left unless your club face is pointed in the wrong direction. Gabish, sole configuration is, is critical. That's why I play with blades still. Can I hit a cavity back golf club further? Yes, generally because the lofts are stronger. So, but but I don't want to. I want a flat blade on the ground. Whoops, I can't even draw a straight line here. What are you going to do? But I want you can see how this is flatter. More of more of the golf club itself is touching the ground. And to add to that, another reason why I still hit blades is you look at a set like this that has the big sole. If the ball's sitting up on some Bermuda grass nice and high where you can get the lower part of the golf club or that sole underneath the ball, you're going to think you're King Kong. I mean, you knock the snot out of it. The ball goes higher, goes further. It's terrific. There's only one problem. When you get ready to chip, and especially if the ground's hard around the green, you're toast. You're going to blade it all the way across the green because you can't fit this dunce cap or this rounded sole underneath the golf ball. So the leading edge of the clay, you're going to blade it. See, rounded sole on hard ground, muy malo. Here's a couple of Mizuno clubs, and you'll see how this sole is wider, the one to the right. I, I hope you can see my cursor here. Let me see if I can draw this. It's wider than this one. I would prefer this over that. 
Now, the golf club manufacturer is going to sell you all the old idea of more center of gravity, lower center of gravity, more weight on the bottom, the ball's going to go higher. Da, 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 da. I don't care. That it means nothing to me. I think that you make most of your money in golf. Well, you, you, you do most of your scoring from 85 yards and in. People do too much uh, concern with how far they hit it. Just don't hit it in a crap. Somehow find a way to control the club face and control your pass. So you just keep moving the ball forward. And you really start to score once you get around 85 yards from the hole. And I can score better with this configuration than I can this. That's just me. So, um, but the trade-off is if you go to, let me do let me, this. In some ways, I'm not discouraged. I don't want to discourage you totally from going to this kind of a configuration. Because the trade-off could be you hit the ball so much further and higher with these that it offsets what you would do in chipping anyway because your chip is not that good in the first place. So, I mean, it's it's a personal decision which way it goes. But here is the wrong way to chip. We're going to look at this on V1 in a moment in, in motion. But you'll see that right here I have a breakdown in the left wrist. I believe it isn't that the right hand dominated is that the left hand stopped because the right hand's on the back side of the shaft the left hand's on the front side of the shaft the right hand can't catch the left hand unless the left hand stops so what i want to be able to do and here's the next picture that's what i'm looking to do i keep in the back of my left hand moving so the right hand can never catch it okay and this way I have a lower trajectory. You see the lower trajectory here. If I go back to previous, this ball right here is going to go eh, straight up in the air. So that means it's not going to roll. So I've got to throw the ball further in the air because it's going to have less roll as a as a uh, as a trajectory into the into the green is going to come from this angle rather than low. I want to chip as low as possible. Now, you notice another thing. I've got a club right here for my ball position, and I've got other clubs. Let me let me go to the next slide here so you can see it on both sides. Here I've got a club, a club, a club, a club. They're a little crooked there. I must have been drinking that day or something. This should be straighter. This should be straighter. And I'm practicing my chipping. Here's the hole. And I am a big believer in using a hitting station, that's what we call that, when you're practicing your chipping. Is it a pain in the neck to put all the clubs down there? Yes. Today, you have all those sticks you can get at Home Depot for $1.80. You put the sticks down. But it's vitally important that your alignment is correct because if it's not, you're going to monkey with it and try and get it to go where you want it to go. And that's not going to work. That's going to make you worse. So you've got to be totally assured that you've got everything aligned properly. This is lined. This is lined. If you've got graphite shafts, be careful. Don't put the clubs too close together. Of course, you're already chipping. You shouldn't break them that way. And I've got the club working on this plane right here. And I can see it from both sides. This is the drill that I use. I take the butt of the golf club right here and put it all the way up against that. Like I, should, I should have grabbed, should have actually put my hand a little higher up in here somewhere and hold the butt of the club against my forearm so that I get no breakdown on the left wrist. This left wrist and this club face are pals. They're both the same. If this breaks down like it did in the first picture, this will also. It's going to go. Soop. I'm going to pop the ball up in here, and I'm going to end up being short. Gavish, let's go to. Uh, da -da. And show. Let's go here, and let's look at right here now. I will send you this video. All you have to do is send an email to quickservice at quickfixgolf.com and I'll send you the video. 
I don't know if any of you noticed, this is a really old video, and you could see I have, like when I came from Miami, Miami Beach Sid. I've got <laughs> all the jewelry on there. I don't even wear that crap anymore. But <laughs> I used to look at Mr. T starter kit. Typical Miami Beach, Miami Beach Sid. These are videos, so it's hard to use them right now, but I'm going to try. Here I go back. Notice I'm not hinging my hands. Where's the ball? There's no ball there. I got a little bit of hinge in the right hand. And I come down, boom, 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 muy malo. That's terrible. You don't want to do that. Let's look at this one. That's what you want to do. You want to keep the back of that left hand moving at all times. And look how much lower that ball's coming off. Much lower trajectory. I want to get it on the green in a hurry. Let's look at this other picture of down the. Let's see if it comes out. No, it didn't. Let me see if I can get it to go here. No, this is the one. Come on. No. Nope. Yep, there it is. If you look at this green right here, right there is the edge of the green. So I'm probably trying to land the ball right there and let it roll the rest of the way. So I'm going to use the least amount of loft I can get away with, not the most. I want to hit the ball low and driving, and I want it to roll. So let's open up the microphones for questions. If you're not confused already, who's got a question? Don't all talk at once now. Hello? So you probably use like a nine iron or something like that to chip it and let it run further than it flew? Well, um, you know, it depends on the shot. Is it into the grain? Is it down grain? Is it downhill? Is it uphill? Um, is it wet? Is it dry? What color is the grass? You know, it's a guessing game. I, I always say the chipping is won or lost before you ever hit it in the decision that you make. If you pick the right club and you pick the right landing area, you're probably going to be successful because you're going to get the ball to travel the right distance. It's going to be distance, not not direction. In fact, your direction should always be good if you use a hitting station like this. You should get used to that. And you should be able to line yourself up pretty well. But I line up the leading edge of the golf club where I want to go. Then my real focus is on my landing area. I'm not looking at the hole. I'm looking at this. Oops. Oops. Why did it do that? Oh, I know. Because we're not. We're off of this. I'm looking at. this right here if i pick the right loft and i pick the right landing area the rest of this should take care of itself that should work out to where it's you know it's going to be either two two feet short or two feet past so your swing is basically straight back and straight through with the chip correct well it's on a, it's on an arc let me see if uh if i can continue the Yep, you see, it's on an arc. It's it's on an arc, probably an 18 degree arc, they'll say. It's, it's on an arc like this. It's not perfectly straight back, it's perfectly straight forward. It may feel like okay. that, but it's not. Any other questions? You can see my Mr. T starter kit. Yeah, Bobby. Yes. Could you? Uh... Darren showed us a, a putting drill where we pointed our left elbow towards the hole and it kept, kept our uh, left wrist straight. Could you use that uh, same thing on this? Well, I'll tell you where we got that from. Uh, I spent the day with with uh, Miguel Jimenez. Help me up. 
Jimenez. He gave me, in fact, he gave me this cigar. I still have it right here. Listen to this. Here it is. It's a, it's a, uh, Artagas from Cuba, Havana, Series P number two. That's what he smokes. And he was having a real hot streak then. He was, he, he won that tournament there in Richmond and then he won the week after. And he showed me how he stuck his elbow out and he had this really funky kind of grip on the golf club and he kept the elbow going for the hole. That was his key to keep the elbow going towards the hole and it would just rock the putter. And I mean, he was, he was winning. He was shooting seven, eight on the par in, in one day. He was shooting 62s and 63s. And that's where we stole it from. So you can, you can try that and see how it works for you. Um, Okay. He's got it. He's got it on. Let's see if I can turn that off. Here we go. Here we go. And every health commissioner can see all of their capacity in their country. I mean, in their state, county by county, so that they know where the. That's not the one. There's the one. There it is. So uh, you can go on YouTube, and Darren has a video of it. We did a video. Where's YouTube? You can go to YouTube, quickfixgolf.com forward slash quickfixgolf. Go to our YouTube channel. There's our commercial. And then where's all the videos? There should be one here for your videos. There should be one for Darren. Doing the putter thing we did, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't really well done, but that's where we got it from. We stole it from Miguel Angel Jimenez. You might as well give him credit. He's a great guy. Well, there he is, right here. See, see the elbow gun, and that's not exactly how Miguel Angel was doing it. And he was, he was really, he had a weird grip going, which you know so many people do now. They have these weird grips, and they're all, they're all fighting shutting the club face that's why they're doing all this malarkey if he could keep his elbow going at the hole his club face wouldn't close that's that's the whole idea the the real problem for a touring pro on putting is he doesn't want the ball to go left they don't want that to happen when he hit the full shot either quite frankly but they don't want it to go left any other questions Lay them on me. I can. Bobby, go ahead. Bobby, when you're when you're taking the club head back for the uh, chip shot, do, it looks like your left wrist uh, supinates slightly. Uh, that couldn't compare that too far, but but if you supinates, uh, yeah, it sort of side, rotates the uh, and slightly to the left, and you take it back <laughs> and under. Uh, club is not moving. Club face is still. No, hunting still. So Wolf says. Somebody, somebody's jacket here. Here it is. Now I know who it was. There it was. Um, I try not to. See, right here, it might look like I'm sort of shutting the face, but I'm not because, look, the club face is the same angle as my spine. Yeah, right where it ought to be. Yeah. Right. Gabish? Yeah, so the back of your uh, left hand is just going where? It, I just, I just hang on to the uh, what? What it feels like to me. Let me get a different picture here. What it feels like to me, and that's probably not the good one. I don't like the way I put the clip right there. There you go. Do this drill. Guess what it feels like to me? It feels like I'm, I'm just swiveling on the left shoulder okay yeah i set my left shoulder and i'm just swiveling the pivot point is the top of the left shoulder okay that and makes I, sense and i'm trying yeah. to stay as quiet as possible see that my body's not moving at all right bobby do you have a touch of weight on your left foot a little bit more than your you know a little bit to forward i think so yeah, it looks like a little bit. Why is it going any further? Why is it going any further? 
So just send me an email and I'll send you this video and you can see the whole thing from top to bottom. Any other questions? If you, about what? If you put, excuse me, I'm sorry. If you put cross-handed, chip, try chipping cross-handed. Because that's basically what I'm doing there. I'm just holding the butt of the golf club up against my forearm. But if you if you putt cross hand and you're successful with it, try chipping cross hands. Why not? I say chip like you putt, putt like you chip. You win every time. Hey Bobby, you had what a, about what? You had a slight hinge on your backswing. Uh, not if it's a short enough chip. I don't. Okay. I don't try to hinge unless I need to elevate the golf ball. I want to hit it higher. I want to hit it lower on a chip. If if I'm if I'm hinging my wrist, I'm going to try and elevate the ball because I'm steepening the plane, so the ball is going to go higher. Using using a higher lofted club. Higher lofted club, and I hinge my hands. Okay. Then I pop. What the about the type away. of ball? What the type of ball is uh is best for you know for shorter shots? Well, if you go to and I'm not telling you to get a Dean Snow ball. Um, but if you go to Dean Snell's site, and let me, let me take you there right now. He's a real good guy. He developed the Titus V1. He developed the TaylorMade, uh, what the hell's going on here? Hold on. Let's go to Snell. Golf.com. And again, I'm not telling you to go there to, to can you spell your dumb Cuban? Unbelievable. Bobby, those Wilson staff 50 elites are pretty good balls too for about yeah, a dollar a ball. Yeah, yeah, they're not bad. They're not bad. But if you look at Dean Snell, who's a very knowledgeable guy, let me get rid of this crap that's on here. You had him on a webinar last year. Yeah, he was yes, on a webinar. Yes. A few webinars ago. Yes. The only, the only, he, he's up there in Boston, Massachusetts, around that area. Very nice area. And uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where did I go? Yeah, there you go. D. Snell. Right there, Orenberger. You could probably go over to his factory, practically. <laughs> yeah, I think he's about an hour away, though. <laughs> is, is it an hour away? But it'd be yeah. worth it to go over and meet the guy. I'm telling you right now, he's he's really he's something else. I tell you, and he'll go to. Yeah, I'm guessing he's not. I'm guessing he's in a cushion at down by New Bedford. Yeah, golf ball fitting philosophy. His philosophy is right on target. When when I read his thing, because I didn't know who he was, uh, Darren turned me on to him. Um, I went. That's exactly what I tell people in the one day school. You know, because it's where did I get it? I mean, he where did he get it? I mean, it's from talking to tour players. I mean, that's that's you test the ball first and foremost with your putter. Then you start working your way back. Then you then you then you chip it. Then you hit shots like you know from seventy yards away, and that's how you find the right ball for yourself. That's where you score. It's from eighty-five to ninety yards away from the hole. If you can't convert from that distance. You might as well stay home. I shouldn't say that because you're just playing for fun. But if you're going to try and compete, if you're going to try and compete, you, you, you just can't compete if you can't if you can't really close the deal from 80 yards away. So like I says, recovery zone 40 yards. Then he tests it from 100 yards. Then he approaches to 165. He works his way back. He starts from the hole and works his way back. Which ball are best for you? He, he explains in here. He says, you know, one ball doesn't really go that much further than the other. They might claim that, but uh, so you can look at this snellgolf.com. That can give you an idea of how how you should fit for a golf ball. He, he makes some nice balls. I mean, there's 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 other ones. I'm a big proponent of saying, look, find a ball you like and stick with it. Whether it's the Precept Laddie or uh, the Wilson 50, like Larry just said, or anything like that. Find a ball you like and stick with it, so you get used to how it how it operates around the greens, how it rolls, how fast it comes off the putter face. You know, for chipping, you really need to stick to the same ball all the time. 
good or bad. You know, you don't need to buy a $60 a dozen golf ball and then you're a nervous wreck every time you hit one in the woods. I mean, get something that fits in your pocketbook and, and, and then your game will get used to that ball. Whether that ball performs as good as a Titus V1, who cares? As long as you get used to it, and, and you're not trying to win the U.S. Open. Uh, Dean even has different balls. I mean, he doesn't, not all the balls are the same. He's got three-piece balls, four-piece balls, or whatever. He's got, you see, he's got balls that are 32 bucks a dozen, and he's got balls that are cheaper. I shouldn't say cheaper, less expensive, whatever. And you can get a hat. <laughs> what, what, what happened to the, oh, he, the he had another ball that was less expensive. Let me see. Hold it. You can buy five dozen at a time. I must say, stop making the less expensive ball. A lot of people didn't want them. Yeah. yeah, Bobby, he's got that test pack, which is pretty good. So you can try out both both types ty type of balls. Does he still have the test pack? Where is it? Oh, here's, yeah, the, test, here's the test pack. Here's the test pack. Uh, you get all all four different balls. But, you know, that's just one idea. You can try some. Oh, look at this. Here you go. I think this is for two dozen balls. The MTBX, $32.99, you get two dozen. That's not bad. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the ball at Costco is not bad. And you get like two dozen of those for like 25 bucks or something. Just find a ball you like and stick with it. His advice is just good. You know, and you get, get, get used to how it rolls. Get used to how it feels off your putter. Get used to how it feels when you chip it. That's one of the reasons why I also still play with blades. Because when I first, this is 1972, King first came out with their, their new clubs, more or less. And Karsten was trying to get me on the to work with ping and and i was just getting started on, on the road and he gave me like six different sets and i couldn't play with any of them the reason why i couldn't play with them i couldn't chip with them every time i hit a chip shot the ball came off like a rocket ship boom it just took off and i said the ball gets away from me where with a blade club i could chop it and it didn't have as much ball speed off the face so you look at the new callaway maverick for instance and the ball just jumps off the face, and that's everything you're trying to do when you're 170 yards away. But it's not what you're trying to do when you're off the edge of the green. And you're trying to hold that ball. It's a downhill chip shot. And it's a little quick. I want a, I want a dead head. I want, I want the ball to come off dead. It's, it's, um, it, that's like, for instance, with a putter, I don't like inserts on the putter. I have a putter that has strictly the metal face. I don't want anything in it touching between the ball and my feel and my hands. But that's just me. I mean, that's how I grew up. So that's that's how it is. So I, I, I want to feel the speed that, that ball comes off that face because I want to roll the ball the right distance. Any other questions? If not, we'll call it a night. Did you learn something? Bob, you're going to uh, put this on YouTube, tonight's I webinar? I'm going to put it on in about, well, it takes me a little while for it to convert, and then I'll probably be on there in about two hours. Yeah, because I, I just got here and I missed it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll, 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 I'll post it. But better, better bet is tomorrow morning it'll be up there. Thank you. All right. All right, Robert. All right, everybody. Thanks, Bobby. Good night, Thanks, Bob. Bobby. Good stuff. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Good night, Bobby. Bobby. Nighty night. You later, Bobby. So, therefore, don't leave the story. Nice,